Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to cover the second import scenario, importing new shoots of photos that are still on our memory cards. So as I go into the import dialog, it doesn't matter what I have selected or what I see here in the library module. I'm simply going to ignore that and go ahead and click on import. On the left hand side I'll specify where the photos are coming from. Because I have a memory card plugged in, Lightroom automatically assumes that that's where I want the photos to come from. If this was not selected, I would go ahead and click on it. I like this little feature to eject the memory card after import. Now because the photos are on a memory card, we have to accomplish two tasks here in the import dialog. We have to copy the photos from the memory card to a permanent location on our hard drive, either in our photo library folder or in our pictures folder. And then, of course, we also need to add the photos to the Lightroom catalog with some additional information that we'll specify on the right-hand side here. In the last scenario, where the photos were already on our hard drive, we chose Add in the top center here. But this time, we're either going to choose Copy or Copy as DNG so that they get copied onto our hard drive. Now, if you have a JPEG, you're going to choose Copy. If you have a RAW file, you have a choice of whether you leave it in its current camera manufacturer proprietary format or if you want to convert to Adobe's DNG raw file format. I choose to copy mine as DNG. There are some advantages and I have a video that discusses those but I have to say it's not a mission critical decision and even if you don't convert to DNG as you copy off your memory card you can always do that later in the library module. So if you're eager to get started and you're not sure, I wouldn't sweat it at this point. I would just choose copy. I'll go ahead and copy as DNG though. And on the right hand side, I'm going to assign some information and then I'm going to say where the photos are going to go on my hard drive. I've already talked about the file handling section here. The only difference is that now that we have a memory card of photos rather than photos that are already on our hard drive, we also have this added functionality to make a second copy to another location. So the main copy is going to go in our pictures folder or our photo library folder. You could plug in another external hard drive and have Lightroom make an archive copy immediately over to that drive. Now if you want to make that archive copy, you're going to click on the location here and change it to wherever you'd like to make the copy to. Now I personally don't use the functionality because when it makes this second copy, it doesn't mimic the folder structure of my main drive. So it's not a good backup system. What it does is it puts the photos in a folder called imported on February 20th, 2012. That doesn't mimic my main folder structure. It would be fine for an additional archive of originals. I'm going to uncheck it for this video. Now you have the option to rename your files. These are the individual photographs, not the folders that they live in. So if you don't want your file names to be what your camera assigned, in my case MG underscore 4127, you can use this functionality to go ahead and rename your files as they're being copied off the memory card. You can also rename your files after you're done importing in the library module. Because you can rename files in multiple places, I have a separate video that explains this functionality. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this. Next I'm going to come down to apply during import. I want to apply my copyright and contact preset so that's just excellent that that's already showing. And next if there are any keywords that apply to every single photo in this shoot I can add those keywords here. So I could add Oregon comma coast comma beach because those three keywords are relevant to all of these photographs. Now I don't have to add keywords in the import dialog. I can add keywords to any subset of photos I want in the library module. So this is optional as well. Now the next panel, the destination panel, is absolutely the most important panel for you here in the import dialog when you're copying from a memory card. It wasn't here when we were adding photos that were already on our hard drive. But now that they're coming from a memory card, we need to say exactly where on our hard drive the photos should be copied to. And new users often never get down to this panel or don't understand how to use it. They end up with a very messy folder structure. 
Now, if you remember back to my organizing video, I suggested this folder structure. This could be photo library or your pictures folder, but within there, a photos go here folder, within there, a year folder, and then within there, a shoot folder. So these are organized by date within the photos go here folder. So let me show you how you would set this up in the import dialog so that it happens automatically for you. In my case, I'm going to put my Photos Go Here folder within my Pictures folder. I don't yet have a Photos Go Here folder, so I need to create it. What I'm going to do is right-click on my pictures, Control-click if you have a one-button mouse, and say Create New Folder. This just pops open a Windows Explorer or a Mac Finder window where I can create a new folder. So you can see here I'm in my pictures. I'm going to click on the New Folder button, which may be down here on the Mac, and I'm going to call this Photos Go Here. Now that I've created that new folder, I'm going to select it, and now you'll see that I have a Photos Go Here folder within my pictures. I'm going to keep this folder selected. Notice that if I click on another one, it becomes highlighted. But I'm going to select Photos Go Here. Then I'm going to tell Lightroom to organize the photos by date within that selected folder. To do that, I'm going to come up to the top of the destination panel. I'm going to choose Organized, not into one folder, but Organize by date. And then I'm going to tell Lightroom how to organize it by date. Each one of these represents a different folder structure or naming convention. In this drop-down, it's using today's date as an example. I recorded this video on February 20th, 2012. But it's really going to use the dates that are associated with my photos. Now, to understand these choices, you need to understand that this slash means subfolder. So this choice means give me a date folder, February 20th, for example, within a 2012 folder. These other two choices in this group are the same thing in that they are date folders within a year folder. They're just different ways of writing the date. As I come down to these other sections, they're very different solutions. For example, in this case, it's giving me a date folder, meaning the 20th, within a month folder, within a year folder. More subfolder levels than I need. I don't need a date folder within February within 2012. A date within 2012 is fine for me. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this first choice here. Now once I say Organize by Date and I select where that organization is going to go in Photos Go Here, Lightroom will show me in italics exactly where these particular photos are going to go. I love that it does this. It allows me to understand exactly the implications of whatever settings I've set here. So don't be in a hurry to click on the Import button. Check this carefully to make sure your photos really are going where you intend. So in this case, there are two dates on this memory card, February 16th and February 17th. So it's going to create two different date folders, which is what I want in this case. And it's going to put these date folders within 2010, within Photos Go Here. Now, if 2010 doesn't yet exist, it will go ahead and create that. Notice that if I accidentally select another folder here, instead of Photos Go Here, that that's where it's going to organize the folders by date. So this is why it's a great idea to name this folder within your Pictures or Photo Library folder, Photos Go Here, because it makes it very clear what you need to click on here in the Destination panel. So my hat's off to David Marks for that idea on naming this folder. So let me just summarize what we've done here. We said the photos are coming from a memory card. We're going to copy them to our hard drive, either in their original format or as Adobe's digital negative RAW file format. We've decided whether or not to rename the files, added our copyright and contact information, maybe added keywords, and then most importantly, we've said where on our hard drive the photos are going to go. Now we're ready to click on Import. But let me show you that you can create a preset with these saved settings so that you can be more sure that you're using the correct settings every time you do an import from a memory card. Now for saving a preset, 
I would make sure that you don't have any keywords in here because you wouldn't want to accidentally be applying those beach keywords every time you import. Then come down here to the bottom center, click on None next to Import Preset, and choose Save Current Settings as New Preset. And I'll call this preset Memory Card Import by Date. To indicate that it's organized by date. And I'll click Create. Now I've got this preset in my drop-down list here to use in the future. So now that I've created the preset, I'll come back up here and I'll add Oregon and Coast back onto these photos as keywords. And I'll click on the Import button. Now in this case it's converting to digital negative and it's importing. Now one of the downsides of converting to DNG is that the imports take longer. On the other hand, there are significant advantages, so again, watch the video on that. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video as it finishes the import. So now my import is finished. I can see that I've imported 128 photos. Now here's my Photos Go Here folder. If I click on the sideways triangle to expand it, I see the 2010 folder it created. I'll click on the sideways triangle to expand that, and here are my two date folders. The first thing that I do after I finish the import is to click on each one of these folders, understand what the photos are, and then right click on the date folder and say rename. And I'm going to add a description. Now I don't want to start typing right now because I would wipe out the 02-16. So I'm going to click after the date and then I'm going to go ahead and add my description. And I'll say save or hit enter. I'll right click on the other one and say rename. And I'll give that a name as well. I really find the folders panel so much more useful when my folders have not just a date on them, but a description. If I can't see the full description, I can hover over this edge right here and click and drag to expand this out when I need that information. So now I want to go ahead and do a second import scenario. This is also going to be an import from a memory card. I'm going to click on the Import button, and the first thing I'm going to do is select my memory card up here. I don't see it because it's not plugged in yet, but as soon as I plug it in, it's going to appear right here. I'm going to go ahead and collapse the C drive here. I'll click on the memory card to select it. Here are the photos. Now if I want to do exactly what I did last time, which is organize by date, I'm going to come down to my import preset here and I'm going to choose memory card import by date. So let's check the settings. It's correctly copying as DNGs, rendering standard previews, not renaming the files, applying my metadata preset, and then in the destination panel, it has photos go here already selected, it's chosen organized by date, and here are the date folders that I'm going to get within the 2005 folder because that's when these photos were taken. So having this preset gives me peace of mind that everything is going to be okay during the import. But I still, when I apply a preset, glance through the settings to make sure there isn't something I want to change. Now in this case, I would probably click in this box and put some keywords that apply to all of these photos but then I would be ready to click on Import. It would be that easy. Now I want to give you a second scenario here though. There may be times when you have many dates on one memory card and you don't want them all split out into different date folders. You want them to be in one date folder, maybe called just March 20th Savannah Trip. You can always import them as they are here in separate folders and then in the library module reorganize them into one folder. So that's an option. But you can also change the settings here to import into one folder. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you. Up here under Organize, I'm going to say, no, don't organize by date this time. Organize into one folder. Now that folder is going to be a March 20th Savannah folder. It's going to go in 2005. Because I'm not choosing Organize by Date, Lightroom's not going to create that 2005 folder for me. I'm going to have to manually create that folder. I'm going to right-click on Photos Go Here, say Create New Folder, and then again in this dialog I'm going to click on the New Folder button, and I'm going to call this 2005, hit Enter, and then Select Folder. So now my 2005 folder is selected. 
If I say organize into one folder and I just select 2005, all of the photos are going to be dumped straight into 2005 rather than that March 20th Savannah folder. I'm going to check this box here that says into subfolder and call this March 20th Savannah. So now Lightroom will create the March 20th Savannah folder and it will go within the 2005 folder. So this scenario is a little different. We're not clicking on Photos Go Here. If we click on Photos Go Here, then this one Savannah subfolder will just go straight into Photos Go Here. So we have to actually select the year that we want this one folder to go into. Again, I would encourage you, before you hit the Import button, to look for the folder in italics, understand what folder it's going to live in, that's going to tell you whether you have the right options selected here or not. Now that I've said where the photos are going to go, I'm going to go ahead and click on the Import button. And once again, I'll pause the video while it copies these files and converts them to Adobe's DNG format. So now that the import is done, I can see again that it's rendering standard previews. 57 photos have come in. Here's my March 20th Savannah folder right here sitting within 2005 within Photos Go Here. If I had organized by date in the import dialog, I would immediately come add a description to this folder. But because I organized into one folder and I set in the import dialog specifically what it should be called, I don't have to do this step here. So now I've covered all of the major import scenarios. In the previous video, importing photos that were already on your hard drive. And in this video, importing photos from memory cards and organizing by date, and also organizing into one folder.